Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. This video is about albinism. First, I will discuss the pathogenesis of albinism. Albinism is due to deficiency of pigment melanin. Melanin is synthesized by melanocytes from tyrosine in the intracellular melanosomes. Now, melanocytes originate from the neural crest and migrate to the skin eyes, hair follicles, and internal ear during development. Albinism can be caused by deficiency of melanin synthesis, by some hereditary defects of melanosomes, or by disorders of melanocytes migration. This clinical classification of albinism. Now, primary albinism is divided into generalized albinism and localized albinism. Generalized albinism can be ocular, oculocutaneous, in which there may be four types, oculocutaneous 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. Oculocutaneous albinism 1 is further subdivided into type A and type B. Now, second form of generalized albinism is syndromic form, and these include hermansky pudlek syndrome and Shidiak-Higashi syndrome. Now, the second form of primary albinism is localized albinism, and these include pi-balbidism and Warden-Burke syndrome. Now, the clinical features of generalized albinism. First, I will discuss the generalized oculocutaneous albinism. In this, there is hypopigmentation of the skin and the hair, and this may be either complete or partial. Now, clinical diagnosis of generalized oculocutaneous albinism requires characteristic eye findings, and these include hypopigmentation, foveal hypoplasia, reduced visual acuity, refractive errors, nystagmus, alternating strabismus, red reflex, lack of binocular vision, lack of depth perception. Next is oculocutaneous albinism type 1. It is also known as tyrosine deficient albinism. In this, there is complete lack of pigment. In type A, there is milky white skin, white hair and red gray iris at birth and throughout life. These people do not develop nevi or freckles. Now, oculocutaneous albinism type 1b. The birth findings are the same as above but with age, skin become light blonde with light blue or hazel eyes. They may develop some pigmented nevi and freckles in the later life. Next is oculocutaneous albinism type 2. It is also known as tyrosine positive albinism. It is the most common form found in Africa. There is some pigmentation of the skin and eyes at birth. They continue to accumulate pigment throughout their lives. Hair is yellow at birth and may darken with age. They have pigmented nevi and freckles, but do not tan. prader willi syndrome and Angelman syndrome have also tyrosine-positive albinism. Next is oculocutaneous albinism type 3. It is also known as Rufous albinism. In this, there is few melanin, red-brown skin, and reddish hair. And the fourth one is oculocutaneous albinism type 4. It is similar to type 2, but the mutation defect is different, and it is more common in peoples of Japan. Now, next is ocular albinism. It is X-linked recessive and is more common in males. In this, there is albinism of eyes, and skin is normal. Family history is positive and there is late onset sensory neural deafness. Now I will discuss syndromic form of generalized albinism. These include hermansky pudlek syndrome and shidiak higashi syndrome. First the hermansky pudlek syndrome. It is an autosomal recessive disorder. There is oculocutaneous albinism, bleeding diathesis, Progressive pulmonary fibrosis. Crohn disease is common and there may be cardiomyopathy and neutropenia. Now, next is the Shidiak Higashi syndrome. It is an oculocutaneous albinism. In this syndrome, the bacterial infections of the skin 
and upper respiratory tracts are common. There may be mild bleeding. Macrophage activation syndrome can also occur. There may be cerebellar atrophy, peripheral neuropathy or developmental delay in this syndrome. Next, I will talk about localized albinism. It is due to abnormal migration of the melanocytes during development. There are localized patches of hypopigmentation of the skin and hair since birth or these may develop with time. Now two examples of localized albinism are pi-balbidism and Wardenberg syndrome. In pi-balbidism, there is white forelock and white macules on the body. While in Wardenberg syndrome, there is white forelock and lateral displacement of the inner canthi broad nasal bridge, heterochromia of the irises, and sensory neural deafness. Now friends, I will discuss the diagnosis of generalized and localized albinism. Now for diagnosis, skin biopsy and hair root sample examination is required and this reveal lack of melanin. In ocular albinism, there are megalomelanosomes. Ophthalmological examination is also must and visual evoked potentials reveal characteristic pattern. Mutational analysis studies should also be made. Next, I will discuss the treatment of albinism. Number 1. Avoid ultraviolet light that is sunlight. For this, wear light colored long sleeved clothes when going out. Sunscreen with a sun protection factor above 30 should be used. Dark glasses should be weared for eyes. And as melanin is present in internal ear, so avoid gentamicin. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health related videos.